Hi, I'm Anna from Estra Lady Tarot in Amsterdam. Let's talk a little bit more about the Thoth deck and other decks that invoke fear in us. <laughs> now, I didn't mean to make that sound so sarcastic, but it is a little bit funny, isn't it? That right off the bat, another video about the Thoth being a scary, dark deck. No, um, all jokes aside, I completely understand where people come from. I actually experienced this for myself in the beginning, or at least, well, for a long time, let's say that. I wasn't into Thoth. I didn't like it. I knew it was a different system slightly than I was used to, or a different system than I was used to, and I knew that the artwork, uh, to me, it seemed cold. It was actually uh, when I got gifted a Thoth deck from a friend of mine with a, with a little book with it, uh, the Gerd Ziegler Mirror to Your Soul or something like that book. I have it in Dutch, that's why I don't know the, the title in English. That I started to, well, actually I opened up to the Thoth deck. And that's when, a while after I found this greenie, and that's when I knew, wow, it, it was just... It, it was just that I needed to fall in love with the artwork, artwork and the coloration and the whole feel of the deck. Honestly, um, I like the deck that was gifted to me, really, I do, uh, but this is the one that I use. I even trimmed a version, just a sim simple standard A.G. Mueller edition. I completely trimmed it to, in order to work with the imagery only, the images, only the images. Turns out... <laughs> This one is the magical one. The thing that I wanted to discuss is that I got an email uh, recently from Amy. And Amy, thanks for contacting me and trusting me with this information. Of course I asked her if she was okay with me mentioning her name and reading her email out loud before making this video. But I really wanted to make this video because it was such a good question that I see repeated often. And those doubts and, and hesitations about specifically the Thoth deck for some reason, well, I mean, we know some reasons, right? Uh, they, they come up a lot. And I have personally experienced them as well, a little bit. It is something that I see often regarding this deck, and I just really wanted to start the discussion, because it doesn't only have to be about the Thoth deck, you know? It can also be about, uh, for instance, the Osho Zen. One of the big reasons that people don't like the Thoth is because Aleister Crowley's name is, you know, practically in capital letters in on every box of the Thoth. Let's see. Well, yeah, I mean, cap that's actually capitals. <laughs> I love this this box. Don't you like this? Just really like this card, the Knight of Cups. Aleister Crowley, and we know some stuff about that guy. That he's a controversial man. He was a controversial man. I'm thinking it was the Victorian era, right? That's really a term that is overused because it's we're talking about decades here, right? The closest way to get to Aleister Crowley's thoughts and ideas and view on life is to read his books. And even then, I think that he was so happy to be able to wake up, shake up the public, shake up the people around him with controversial things that he did with his shock value. Even by reading the books, it's possible that he was completely over-exaggerating some things, or I think he reveled in that he was seen as the most evil man of all. I mean, all the documentaries about the Thoth deck or Aleister Crowley or that house, I forget the name now, that he lived in and some seriously weird shit happened there. Yeah, every documentary about him and all of that, the, that whole situation, that whole movement of magic spelled with a K at the end, an extra K at the end, they all start with the wickedest man alive. And I mean, I think he really did like that title. Shock value you know, it's, it says what it does. It shakes you up, it shocks you initially. And either you are completely repelled by it and think it's the devil and you, you know, turn to light or whatever, or it shocks you and you start to feel that twist within you and actually open up to what it truly is. Because 
pure evil doesn't exist. I've mentioned this before in another video, that I think it's just energy, and energy in itself, it's like nature, it's neutral. We are the ones with, you know, our own perception, our own mind and, and, and projections that we put onto that who make it into good or bad or negative or positive or all of those terms are kind of vague. That's an opinion, right? For people who do believe that pure evil exists, like a sort of big, dark, evil fire force, and then there's also God. So we could say the God that you believe in and then the, the bad energy, the devil that you believe in. If that's how you see the world, then I understand the fear. The whole thing about being scared of the darkness, being scared of this evil thing, when you don't have that conditioning of seeing the world that black and white, when you feel that it's not even gray, actually it's like all the colors of the rainbow and further than that, we're going ultraviolet here. When that's how you see the world, there really isn't any temptation at play, there really isn't any guilt, there's just exploration and experimentation and seeing what you like and seeing what fits with you and seeing what clicks and seeing what makes sense and what is true to you, what is truth. Um, I'm completely rambling here, but there is a point that I'm trying to make. I can't seem to grasp what I'm actually trying to say here. Help me out. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of thinking, what if true evil did exist? Because it does exist to some people. Then what do you do? You, you do your best to avoid it completely at all costs. I don't see that as balanced. I see that as it will ultimately end up in repressed feelings. Now, I know this isn't news to anyone, but when working with tarot, because that's what we're talking about, of course, with any tarot deck, there's just that responsibility that is being put in your hands as the reader, whether you read for others or just for yourself. Let's just focus on reading just for yourself right now. That responsibility is put on you as the interpreter, as the reader. You know what I mean? Like, you'll have to self-reflect because that is what the tarot is. The minute that you start to deny that darkness, deny the repressed things, deny the shadows, we could say, or deny the things that don't sit well with your ego, then I don't really see the point. Now you can go as superficial and as deep as you want with the tarot, okay? That is up to you. If you want to get that, to get something beautiful and wonderful and growth from working with the tarot, then you'll have to, you know, make that decision and take that responsibility. Um, for me it happened in a very natural way. I didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, I mean, I don't think every any new reader truly knows what they're getting into, and that's the fun part of it. But I just went into like, okay, let's see what these cards mean. And it just, it was a roller coaster, and it still is. Um, it's about the thing that you, you are a true master because you listen to your inner voice, and you are a true master because you know that you're never done learning. Let me just do things right and read Amy's email. Dear Anna, greetings. Over the past year, I've been delving into my own study of the tarot. I'm in my late 40s and I'm just starting out after resisting a deep pull to do tarot work that lasted a few years. My fears came from childhood religious programming, probably no surprise here. I've just recently stumbled upon your YouTube channel and I just love your video. So informative, sweet and wise. I thought I'd reach out to you with a question and your feedback. Right now, I'm exclusively using the Rider Waite Smith deck and I love it. After overcoming my initial fear of tarot study, I've really begun to feel at home with this deck and I have found it to be spiritually enriching. I think that alone is great. 
However, I've been intrigued with the soft deck based on your recent YouTube discussions of working with it. The images are truly stunning and beautiful. Please forgive my question, but do you find the energy of this deck in any way dark or disturbing? Do you think it is a spiritually safe deck to use? I think Alistair Crowley may have been brilliant in his own way, but some of his words and actions don't sit particularly well with me. Does that matter? I'd be truly interested in any feedback or response you care to give. Thank you for all of your work and the beautiful reflections you share with all of us. Stay safe and take care. Kind regards, Amy from the USA. Thanks again for that email and your sweet, kind words. So yeah, I did answer, I did reply to this email, I did answer. So for Amy especially, I will um, repeat myself a little bit, but yeah, I'm sure that's okay. Let me start here. Hi Amy, thank you so much for your question. It took me a while to, to respond, blah blah blah. Okay, that's not in interesting. I of course think it's great you are getting into tarot and the Thoth, such an intriguing deck. I think I misspelled that. Actually, I actually do see what you mean with a darker energy. Some people do indeed find it disturbing. My opinion is, it's art. Good art needs to be a little disturbing in order to be good. Ain't that the truth? Lady Frida Harris is the artist who painted all of these cards. Here it says, Lady Frida Harris, who painted the cards in the early years of World War II, she had painted several versions of some cards before Crowley approved them. Although she knew little about the tarot or its symbolism, I don't think that's right. I think Lady Frida Harris knew everything that she was painting anyway. Like I said, especially in the beginning, I do kind of feel that this deck has a different energy, has a different vibe. It's beautiful once you fall in love with it and open up to it and see that it can be whatever you want it to be. Because I answered in my email, ultimately you are reading yourself. Ultimately, you are the one who has that responsibility of seeing light and dark. You are the one who is opening up to yourself. I don't think a deck can be good or bad. I don't think a, a type of artwork or... I mean, what exactly is it about this deck that is dark? Is it just that Aleister Crowley made it? Was the creator? Because then, why are so many people still in love with the Osho Zen Tarot? We've all seen uh, the Bhagwan documentary on Netflix, and that wasn't really... They actually had a master card in the Osho Zen Tarot that most people take out if they are not uh, a Rajneesh. But there is no master card in the Thoth. Unless maybe the universal hexagram is supposed to be Crowley himself. <laughs> or the devil, right? Let me read on. Lady Frida Harris, who painted these cards, was ahead of her time, I think, and the cards are jam-packed with symbolism. There's sacred geometry, alchemy, you name it. The maker of the deck is Aleister Crowley, and he was no doubt a controversial man, but I believe he liked being in the spotlight as a sort of villain in order to wake up the people in Victorian times. They had all these silly rules. Wow, I said that really strangely, but okay. They had all these silly rules. We still have many silly rules. Shock value, I believe. Ultimately, it's what you do with the decks that makes it what it is. You read yourself. Like with any deck, I think it doesn't matter at what level you are. If the deck calls to you, just give it a go. It's not true at all that Every tarot, everyone uh, interested in tarot has to start with a Rider-Waite Smith or has to start with a Marseille. You can start with any deck that you like. Um, just make sure that you know they are actual tarot cards because <laughs> there's a difference still in between tarot and oracle. You know, I think if the deck really calls to you, try it out. They are just pieces of cardboard that you can give to someone or donate in case you end up not liking the deck. But I hope you find a way to work with it that works and feels good for you. So what I mean with that is that I really like the idea of... There are no rules. By that I mean 
I love the tarot study and I think it's important to have that base. I've delved into the Book of Thoth and I had been reading with the Rider Waite Smith and the Marseille for so long that I really made it my own. And so, you know, I'm a positive person. I can be very cynical for a positive person, but I'm still a positive person. I still consider myself that. And so maybe I do read a little bit more positivity in, in cards. It's a reflection of yourself. So let's read on. Many people keep saying how dark the Thoth is. Although the Thoth may be perceived by many people as dark and scary and um, strange and complicated. But the Thoth deck doesn't depict a man with ten swords stuck in his back. And I know that this argument has been made on another channel, and I'm sorry at this moment I don't remember, but how come we see the Rider Waite Smith? I mean, how come so many of us see the Rider Waite Smith as a nice balanced deck that is easy to use, that is that can be gentle, that is a deck that's for beginners, that's a deck that's easy to start with, but it has, like, one of the scariest looking... If you have that fear, then how come this isn't as scary as the complete Thoth deck? Why is that? I mean, I don't have an answer for that. It's really... It's really something that you'll have to find out for yourself. Where does that fear come from? Or where does that hesitation come from? Or dislike come from? Look, if you don't like the deck, that's fine. We all have different tastes. Isn't that wonderful? There are millions of tarot decks these days, so you just pick and choose. But figure out, is it the deck that you don't like? Because that is a discussion that we cannot have, okay? That's just opinion. That's just taste, a matter of taste. But is it the deck that you don't like? Or is it Aleister Crowley and the stories that we've heard about him? The things that he, he, he put in his books, which, again, I do feel most of them are exaggerated. He kind of liked the drama, right? He liked being in the spotlights as a villain, as I said. So how much does that matter, like you said? Do you like this deck enough that you can get over it? Or what is it, truly? Think about it. Is, it. is it actually that you're afraid of Crowley? Sure, there's plenty of reason to be scared of a man with that reputation. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know, I just keep, I keep thinking about it. Like, for instance, the music I like to listen to. I like rock music and I listen to metal bands who worship the devil, okay? I'm just gonna put that out there. That doesn't mean that I, whatever is true, that doesn't mean that I like that, that doesn't mean that I believe that, that doesn't mean that I believe the devil is true, that is real, that doesn't stop me from enjoying the music. Look, the thing is, a person can enjoy a metal band that openly worships the devil or something like that on stage while not believing in the devil at all or even completely disliking that part of the of the band of the the image and uh, what the band is about but still absolutely enjoy that music so these people doing something that the listener would never do doesn't mean that they are bad musicians <laughs> So yeah, what about the Thoth? Is it truly the imagery? It's confronting, but you know, so is this. When I read with the Thoth, and I haven't been doing that for, for a long time at all, I do incorporate what I've read in the Book of Thoth and those books. I do read a little bit differently the power of the will, <laughs> basically. And I see it very much in this deck. This is just such a fiery deck. There's these beams of light and energy and, and things and 
things happening, movement all around. Uh, nothing is ever still. Everything is in flux. Everything is in motion. Everything is moving. Everything is active. So that really brings out that energy in me. And if you feel like sitting down comfortably in your rocking chair, checking in for the day, and you need a gentle message, I still think... Again, of course, it's all about you and how you interpret the cards and what kind of reader you are and what connections your brain makes and your body makes. But I'd say maybe don't pick up the thoth for those moments. Pick up the thoth for the big projects. Pick up this deck for... Um, I kind of want to say if you can take it. <laughs> because yes, I agree. It can be a little bit sharper. But once you understand where all of this symbolism is coming from, you, you'll never look at it the same way as you did at first glance. There's also fluidity. Ultimately, I think it is a balanced deck. I think it is something that you can really learn from. There's just so much in here. Let's read the third email. Thank you so much for your wonderful thoughts and response. I, c I really appreciate your insight on this question and for taking it so seriously. I can imagine many veteran tarot practitioners would just roll their eyes at this question. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Honestly, the community that I know, which is online, is really nice and really open and really sweet. I, I Yeah, I have encountered some um, very rigid people. But there's an easy way to not deal with them. Just unsubscribe to their Facebook group. The practice of tarot is rather solitary and sometimes it's good to learn more of the experience of others. So that's why I reached out to you. I think that's great. I do that too. And then Amy continues and says, I don't believe that spiritual practice need only to be about light. Their shadow must certainly be acknowledged and integrated in some way. But I do see my work with the tarot, along with prayer and med meditation, etc., as vehicles to hopefully expand my capacities for compassion, love, and service to the world. And I wonder whether it's possible for the Thoth deck to be in alignment with, the va with these values. I mean, then Amy continues and says something along the lines of, Alistair Crowley having that bad reputation, and even though you don't like the man, even though you don't like the creator, you can still like what he created. Um, and e even though we don't know, maybe if she would, you know, meet him, she would maybe find him quite enjoyable. <laughs> we don't know these things, okay? But what Amy's trying to say, and what we're all looking for, is that the light and the shadow, we want to work with both and understand both and integrate both. Isn't this a beautiful card for that? Because in the end, what we're looking for is balance. We need to actively look for that balance. The way that we do that is through the tarot cards. So yeah, honestly, I'd say don't be afraid. I think also just working with the tarot, any tarot, takes away a huge part of your fear in general. I felt... And I feel that um, through the years, you know, like it, it goes up and down. It Sometimes it completely comes back and I, I, I think I'm not afraid of anything. And that's great. That's very empowering. And then a few months later, again, it's like, oh, wait, no. There is some stuff still to work through because that, uh, you know, that uh, higher energy, that too high energy it's kind of like it takes away your your balance. It takes away your balance. Just like saying, oh, I'm, a, I'm so afraid of everything. I don't think that this kind of fear, like you said uh, explicitly, comes from within us. I mean, I didn't grow up with learning those things. But if we didn't hear about tarot cards being bad, or even just good or, and bad in general, we would pick up a deck of tarot cards and, well, first of all, probably not understand it very well, but we <laughs> would for certain not be afraid of it that much. I mean, in the end, a deck of cards 
is a tool. It is just cardboard. Yeah? It's about the intention that you put into it, if already you believe in that. I'm not pushing you to believe in that. But I certainly do. I do think that intention can stick to objects and things. But that's me. You know what I mean? That's not the cards. That's me. The tarot is so powerful. The tarot is so good. The tarot is complete and it's layered and knowing it, learning about it, the study alone, it just opens you up. It doesn't matter what deck it is. It really doesn't. I want to go back to a little thing that I just brushed over earlier in this video. Do you find the energy of this deck in any way dark or disturbing? So I already kind of vaguely addressed that I kind of enjoy the darkness and the disturbing things. I enjoy freedom. I want to not only feel free, but be free. Being able to think for myself. That alone, there are so many people in the world who don't have that privilege. It's actually a privilege to be able to think for yourself. How crazy is that? But it's true. And then using a deck like this, with all that fire and willpower right at the front of it, willpower is, I still think, it's, it probably is, to me at least, the most powerful thing there is. Using a deck like this is extremely empowering. To sum up, like I said, yes, I think some cards, especially in this deck, just my opinion, I think it's beautiful, but at the same time also, yes, it is a little dark, Yes, it is a little disturbing, but it's good art, and that's what good art does. Good art is, isn't there to be pretty, isn't there to be, you know? Good art is disturbing. It shakes you up. It's the shock value. Hi guys, editing Anna here. I needed a second take on this topic. It's actually the next day, maybe you can spot the differences. I feel, and I'm sorry, I'm reading my notes, but it's just the way it is. I feel that I need to add in this little clip because as I mentioned before, I'm not quite finding the right words in the video. And I really want to do this topic justice. I think I keep mentioning this uh, terms that Amy used, the thought deck can be dark, can be disturbing. Now I have better words for those terms. Dark should be unknown. And disturbing actually is thought-provoking. I mentioned that the Crowley-Harris deck is of another time, um, a time where Crowley, at least, uh, amongst a few others, were of the opinion that it was time for a revolution. So that's where that spiritual freedom comes from. That's where that um, need for liberation of sorts comes from. And earlier in the video, I wrote a little note uh, in the corner that you may have missed. It said, the revolutions of generations happens by people being exposed to new ideas. A revolution was needed here too, so shake up and wake up the masses. Now, using my own example, it's not my intention to shock people with the satanic rock example. I just mean by that that it doesn't necessarily matter who made something or with what intention. If you like it, then by all means just uh, use it the way you like. But also, on the other hand, I kind of feel that that could easily take away, um, take away an important part of the thing, of the music, of the painting, of the tarot deck, of the meaning behind it, and of the reason it was made in the first place. That's why I can't seem to make my point in the video, I was just riffing, basically. I don't know, to me it's just interesting, and to me something like, again, for instance, Satanism, <laughs> is just a reaction. So even that you could use in the way that you find helpful. I realize that must sound crazy to some, but from what I know about it, it's about freedom, liberation, and willpower, and making your own decisions. I discussed this with my partner this morning, and he said something that I'd like to add in. Take a look at the Lust card, for instance, initially called Strength. 
right? Why did Crowley change the name of this card? Why did he change it to one of the seven sins? Why did he change it just to one of the sins? Because he's trying to give you a new perspective. Because he's trying to turn your world upside down. Flip your perception of good and bad. Because this lust is something that we're supposed to want. I'm going to read you one of my favorite passages from the Book of Thoth. And it's about the strength card, uh, the lust card. Lust implies not only strength, but the joy of strength exercised. It is vigor, and the rapture of vigor. Come forth, O children, under the stars, and take your fill of love. I am above you, and I am in you. My ecstasy is in yours. My joy is to see your joy. Beauty and strength, leaping laughter, and delicious languor, force and fire are of us. I am the snake that giveth knowledge and delight and bright glory and stir the hearts of men with drunkenness. To worship me take wine and strange drugs whereof I will tell my prophet and be drunk thereof. They shall not harm ye at all. It is a lie, this folly against self. The exposure of innocence is a lie. Be strong, O oh man. Lust. Enjoy all things of sense and rapture. Fear not that any god shall deny thee for this. It's so good. The things that have a hold over us keep us in our place. They keep us an easy target for manipulation, the masses being controlled. I can bring in the whole drama, the whole nine yards. They keep us safe spiritually safe. What is that? I thought about it and the reason that I had never heard that term and had never even considered it is because to me it's a paradox. Safety can be stagnant and stupid like and um, expressionless and spirituality is the search is the constant flux the constant movement that we see in this deck very well depicted that is what i see in the thoth deck and that is what spirituality is to me it's about the exploration in that sense safety doesn't exist the reason i'm kind of going back and forth about the crowley harris deck being indeed a little different than most decks and at the same time not being that crazy at all is because in the end it's what you make of it that is true we interpret we project we put our own energy in it get to know it and decide for yourself but I would like to give you it's nice to keep all of these things in mind and I don't think that it's crazy to say that at the same time it can be in alignment with your values, with your specific values, whatever they are, because yes, again, you are the master, you make the rules. So here we go, that was a hopefully short intermission <laughs> right before the end of my video. Stick around a little longer and thank you for listening. If your journey with the deck, with the tarot itself overall and with the, with the Thoth deck goes naturally and smoothly, then I'm sure that you'll know these cards so well. You will be able to see the layers that, that the cards won't look dark, disturbing, and cold any longer. It's supposed to give you love and light and warmth and trust, and you'll be able to see that as well. If you want to work with the deck, it's about understanding it. It's about understanding why it looks like that understanding why every every piece of symbolism is incorporated in this deck. Then you asked, do you think it's a spiritually safe deck to use? My answer to you is, do you think you are safe when you do spiritual work? It's really about uh, what you make of it. Again, there's just no getting around that. What is spiritually safe? I've never heard that before. And it's fine, it's good to ask these questions, but it's really something that you'll have to find out for yourself. 
through experience because it doesn't matter what I think. Right now, you are the focus. Right now, you are allowed to be the main character in the book that is your life. Right now, it's time for you to listen to yourself. It's great, you know, finally you are um, allowing that pull to happen. And you're doing it, that's great. When people say it can be whatever you want it to be, or it can be whatever, when I say that, I mean that you are the one making the rules and you are also allowed to break them. It's not about everything is okay. No, and it's also not about this is light and good and this is dark and evil. At least, not to me. So spiritually safe. If I were to tell you now, I like the thoth, but it's not spiritually safe to use because it brings evil spirits or something. You know, some people believe that. But I think if we're talking strictly tarot, then the evil spirits, they come from you, <laughs> not the cards. A bit of advice is write things down. Don't know if you already do that, but to me that's like the big learning thing. The big thing to do with tarot and study and spirituality and all that stuff. Write things down regarding tarot. How do you work with the cards? What do you want to get out of that? Uh, get, out, get out of it? How is your relationship with your deck? How do you feel about yourself when you read cards for yourself? Basically, what are your goals? When you focus on your goals while asking a question to your cards, then what does it matter what deck it is? Because you have that goal of, for instance, want to be more open to love. There is love in this deck. There is love in the tarot system. You can see love in any card. You can see destruction in any card. I think the best example is to say the most positive card in the deck, the sun, has a dark side. The most negative card in the deck, the tower, has a light side. So where are you? Where in that spectrum are you? I could have lied to you and said, no, I don't see the darkness in the, in the Thoth deck. But the more I work with it, the more balanced I feel it is, it truly is, the more at home I get with it. I do use this deck, actually, as daily draws. I really, really hope that I actually did get my points across, because this was a very good question and interesting topic. The most important thing that I can end this video with, I think, is simply to tell you again and other people watching that you are the one making these rules. That you are the one projecting. You are the one interpreting. You are the one with the voice here. When you read the tarot, you read yourself. So don't forget that. Okay, everyone, I have to stop now. Um, <laughs> This is going to be fun editing this video. Oh, God. Okay, anyway, I hope everyone enjoys the super moon, and uh, I will see you soon. Everyone stay safe, and please, if there are any more questions, like I said, keep them coming. I really enjoy answering them, even if they are actually unanswerable. <laughs> so this is just to open up the discussion I realize I haven't truly given any answers here. This is all from my own perspective, all from my own experience. Continue asking the questions. Continue underneath this video. Let's just start the discussion. That is the initial goal of this video. Start the discussion. Nobody's gonna give you any answers, okay? It's just about asking the right questions. Thank you everyone for watching. Please consider subscribing. Apparently I'm supposed to remind you of that every so often. So, there you go, I do that. It's a beautiful day, I'm going to walk my dog because that is a mandatory walk every day. Okay everyone, that's it for today and I will see you later.